Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Sunday, November 24th, 2024. I've been doing a daily countdown of my 366 favorite video games of all time and coming in at number 38 is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. I know this may come as a surprise to people that have been following along for a while, and I am oh so painfully aware that my opinion of Tactics Advance being substantially better than the original Tactics, which I ranked as my 161st favorite game, uh, is, you know, not popular. I'll address that at the end. I do also want to mention, before we get too far into this, that while I clearly love this game, I will admit that the uh, pacing of combat animations and other sequences can definitely be slow. Uh, to facilitate not spending way too much time recording the game, I did make heavy use of RetroArch's fast-forward function, so you're gonna see probably a lot of that, uh, especially during opponent's turns. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into it. The game starts off in the real world, with children playing at school, getting into a snowball fight. Sounds nice, cute, fun, right? Uh, this is really just the combat tutorial, but also works to kick off the story. March is a fairly lonely kid who just recently moved to the small town of St. Evelise and has had trouble making new friends. Mute is one of his classmates being bullied by the other kids for not only his shy personality, but also because he's sad about his mom dying. Kids sure do suck sometimes. Uh, both of them are defended by Ritz, a fiery young girl who can't stand the bullies at the school, but also doesn't have much of a filter herself. After the snowball fight is over, the kids all head over to March's house, where we also meet his younger brother, Doned. Due to an illness, Doned is bound to a wheelchair and frequently has to spend time in the hospital. The kids bond a little and talk about their hobbies. Tactics Advance is absolutely shameless, as one of the only things these kids all agree on is how much they love to play Final Fantasy. It's hilarious and uh, comes up many times actually throughout the game. So when Moot discovers that Donut reads a lot at the hospital because there's not much else to do there, he starts telling them about this strange book he found. Well, when the kids start taking a look at that book together, it transforms their whole town into the world of Final Fantasy's Ivalice, the setting for Final Fantasy Tactics and later on Final Fantasy XII. I am here to defend the story of Tactics Advance in all of its absurdity and silliness. Narratively, it's not that complicated, especially when you compare it to the first Tactics game's story filled with politics, intrigue, and nuanced character motivations and really interesting timeline things. March follows many of the fish out of water tropes, encountering non-human races and not knowing how to interact with them, knowing absolutely nothing about current events and how that affects him and people around him, and how the laws of the land even work. He's saved by a Moogle named Montblanc, who is clearly trustworthy, but also like really quick to trust. Dang. Uh, after March explains everything that's happened, Montblanc helps him to find a sort of direction in this new life, while also getting to see the world around him. A major part of the world building of Ivalice is the existence of clans, which are basically questing guilds that are hired to take on missions as contracts. The problem is, this is all pretty uh, loosey-goosey, which is kind of funny for a place filled with strict enforcement of very random laws specifically towards combat. I'll get to that in a minute, but first I want to talk about clan structures. As you move about the overworld map, you can run into other clans, and often that means you fight them over territory. 
Performing missions in different locations can also cause you to gain them as your clan's territory, and this clan war is very much a driving part of both the core gameplay loop, but also of the story. Each of March's friends have become involved with different factions throughout Ivalice as well, and they certainly aren't all on the same page regarding the situation they've found themselves in. Initially, they all think, for the most part, that it's so cool to be experiencing the world of one of their favorite video games, but as they learn more, it becomes apparent that this is in fact their town, and everyone in it has been affected somehow by this book, and the clans warring against each other could actually be hurting these people. This is all surface level, but the story's heart is really at, I think, Doned's struggle. It eventually becomes apparent that different things about this world are built around the innate desires of each of the four kids. March had been lonely and now is leading a massive clan with loads of friends. Mute found power and is a prince, actually, <laughs> uh, while his mom is alive again. I except she's not, and uh, that's where the actual antagonist is. Oops. Um, Ritz, uh, you know, always wanted red hair. Um, good job, Ritz. You did it. Don't think you needed a magic book for it, but you did it. But Doned is the most interesting because they have a very real, compelling reason to not want to undo this world. They're not sick in it. For the first time in their life, they're able to walk, run even, and enjoy their life to the fullest, unhindered by their condition. It's a real moral quandary for March to return the world to normal, knowing how his own brother will directly suffer from it. Overall, I think the story here has a lot more depth to it than people credit to it, and while the stakes aren't that high relative to like the norms of the franchise, I think it stands on its own as something profound and evocative. But that's also not really why we're here. Oh man, it's fun to kill stuff. Uh, the game retains many of the tactical combat mechanics that were present in the first Final Fantasy Tactics, but also makes some pretty sweeping changes. Characters still move around on a grid, they're able to make a movement and take some other action on each of their turns. This could be making attacks, casting spells, using items, or all sorts of other abilities that they can unlock. Characters facing their attacker also have a higher chance of dodging, so positioning and even the direction you're facing are critically important. The job system, of course, returns, but it's undergone some massive changes. There are a ridiculous 34 jobs this time around, and not everyone can be everything. As you gain more members in your clan, there are avenues to diversify your party in several ways. Uh, for starters, some jobs are limited by race, with five playable races in Tactics Advance. There's some overlap, but these differences in combinations definitely matter. Learning new abilities is also a huge change from the first game. Instead of just learning things passively from leveling up each job, you gain ability points in addition to experience, and those fill up until you master abilities based on your current equipment. I very much prefer this method compared to just leveling up characters, because it makes each piece of equipment feel so much more valuable and interesting than just being a stat stick. Although some certainly are <laughs> stat sticks, but yeah. I'll talk a whole lot about some similar systems as we continue to wrap up the year, so as I revisit it, my love for this system should become a little more clear. The important thing about mastering the abilities, however, is that you have different types of ability slots you can equip from outside your current job, allowing you to bring in select elements from other jobs for each character. As an example, both humans and moogles can be thieves, but moogles can't be white mages and humans can't be time mages. So maybe you want a thief with the ability to throw out some healing, so you do that with a human. But if you want your thief to be able to cast spells like haste, you'd pick the Moogle. The way you unlock each job is also a bit different, being on a per character basis, requiring that character to know certain combinations of abilities. Continuing our thief example, mastering two abilities as a human thief unlocks the ability for that character to use the ninja job, while mastering two with a Moogle thief allows them to be either a smuggler or a gadgeteer. 
Some jobs even require having combinations of mastered abilities from different jobs, like humans that master an ability each for white and black mage can become blue mages. It's a fun little skill tree that allows you to devote time to each character differently and make them feel unique instead of just another cog in the machine, which is good because you're, you're going to have a lot of cogs in your machine. Uh, that leaves one last major, and this is really major, difference in the combat that Tactics Advanced introduced, and it's definitely the elephant in the room for this whole game. This makes or breaks the game to many people. It's judges and laws. Judges are crucial to the society of Ivalice, and in this game, they're pretty weird. They uphold the law of the land, but the law of the land is just, just nonsense. Like, who is coming up with this stuff? Uh, it's kind of, it's Mute and his dad. But, um, you know, who is doing this stuff? Uh, clans fighting to the death over contested territory inside cities? Totally legal. Casting Cure on a Thursday? straight to prison with you. Each day in the game, a different law is enforced, and there's tons of them that could be selected. So every time you go into battle, you could get a huge shakeup requiring you to potentially pivot from your normal strategy. Maybe your typical party has a whole backline of archers just raining down death from above. Well, what do you do when there's a law that says you can't fire arrows? A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, like just Google it and you're going to find this, hate this system. I get the idea that you've spent who knows how much time grinding and building up your characters, and it can be frustrating and at times unfun to learn that you can't do the thing you wanted to do. But personally, I absolutely love this system. The idea of the game telling me, hey, you have this huge wrench thrown into your plan, now sink or swim, is amazing to me, and perhaps the greatest idea in the whole game. Yes, I know you can just dance around it a lot of the time and only pick fights on days that the laws are favorable to you, which just creates annoyance rather than interesting decisions, but you know what? I'm going to take the interesting decisions. Uh, I never look at the laws before I'm actually in a mission and selecting my party from my available clan members. It's way more fun that way. And the idea that if I do break a law, that character does actually go to prison and I have the option to go bail them out and, or just let them sit through their sentence is fun to me. And that's just one of the many things that make the Ivalice of Tactics Advance so vibrant and interesting. As you'll learn in the coming weeks, I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy XII, and that Ivalice is basically this Ivalice. There's some differences and there's a gap in the timelines, but the idea of the clans running around in the different races like the Banga and the Vera are all there. I love the aesthetics and locations of this game, and you're going to have a whole lot of opportunities to explore them. There's 300 missions you can do. While I can appreciate the more classical fantasy setting of the original tactics, it feels relatively boring and generic compared to the unique charms of Ivalice in the 2000s titles. As mentioned, I think both stories are great in their own different ways, but I very much prefer the ability and job systems of Advance over the original, and even the difficulty curve, which is another thing that people disagree with me on, is what I've learned. Uh, yes, the game is a lot easier on the whole, but makes it a lot safer to branch out and experiment with weird party compositions and constantly try new strategies. Tactics games should be about adapting and trying new and fun things in from start to finish, between the exploration and fish out of water elements of the narrative, to the equipment ability system, to the different race oriented job trees, and of course, to the laws imposing constantly evolving restrictions. That is what this game is always about, and it's definitely one of the best at it. Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 37th favorite game where it is so difficult to hate this irredeemably evil antagonist who also just won't shut up.